we had another announcement that we wanted to share with you guys. Um, and it's one that we've talked a lot about um, ourselves um, and one that we've prayed a lot about um, trying to see you know what we thought about it and if it was the right time or not um, and um, and we have come to a decision please allow me to introduce you to the family hi I'm Solana and I'm 12 I'm Danica and I'm 10 and this is Happy. He's three years old. And this is Emma. She's 16 months old. I'm Tom, the dad. I'm Melissa, and I'm the mom. And this is Coco. The snow was so deep and thick that uh, even with the, the four-wheeler and pushing it in low gear, we uh, had a little bit of snow today and uh, had to go out and do quite a bit of snow plowing. One thing that was really cool is I met a new neighbor today that I hadn't met before. Um, he, uh, well not like neighborhood neighbor, like not next door neighbor. And uh, the uh, he actually came over and helped me. So I've just been using the snow plow um, for a while now because my snow blower um, wasn't running. Finally got it uh, running with uh, his help went up and um, did all the sidewalks and everything up at our church. The snow was so deep and thick that uh, even with the, the four-wheeler and pushing it in low gear, the snow was deeper than the plow blade um, and it was getting you know pretty heavy. And so it was causing the back wheels to slip sideways and I was going along one of the front sidewalks and got down and there's these um, extremely well put in the handrails anyways. And uh, so uh, when I got over there, there's a lot of snow right there because there's a lot of cement at the bottom there. And uh, I was trying to push that snow out anyways and the tires let loose and, and I slid sideways. And, uh, and then of course, right as I slid sideways, then they caught again and I started going and couldn't stop quick enough and uh, ended up hitting those steel rails with the side or the front of the kind of the corner of the four-wheeler um, hurt really bad because it kind of made me fly forward to the number on the uh, four-wheeler and uh, I had to put this bungee cord over because it uh, completely, it completely broke the front cover. My goals for 2017 are to read the Book of Mormon by myself and I'm going to try to read at least a chapter every day and my second one is to get things done after being told once or twice. I'm going to try to do that by repeating it in my head while I'm going to do it. My 2017 goals are to eat healthier, get four values for personal progress done, and have a better attitude. My 2017 goals and resolutions are to eat better as for myself as well as as a family, to be more active, um, not in the cold times because I don't like the cold, but um, to go outside more, be more active, go on walks, um, to potty train both little children, um, to be more financially stable, and to be able to read more books. Because I love reading. But every time I start reading, I hear, Mom, Mom, Mom. I'd like to make a point of going on regular dates with my husband and children, which hopefully will work with the Christmas gift that I gave both of them, or all three of them. 
So let's talk about my 2017 New Year's resolutions. My first is to pray more often with my spouse. Um, and pray more often just in general, but especially with my spouse. I believe that it really helps to bring you closer together as husband and wife to be able to do so. I think that it also helps your spouse to know um, what struggles that you are dealing with at the time and um, know kind of how they can or might be able to help you without you know having to you know be prodding you know to find out. I also want to work hard on trying to do more scripture study on my own. I'm going to shoot for trying to do 30 minutes a day of personal reading above and beyond our family time. I also would like to work towards losing about 50 pounds this year. Um, I don't think I've ever mentioned this on the vlog before, but um, I went through a gastric bypass surgery over five years ago now. Um, and at one point I weighed about 430 pounds at my highest. Um, and uh, so, you know, now, you know, I, I got down as low as two, about 250 pounds. And once I hit there, my body just pretty much stopped. It's not really for looks or anything like that. I mean, I'm comfortable with who I am and, and so forth. Um, but really it's more about wanting to just be more active with my kids and stuff. I really want to work hard on building this channel um, and, and finding more success in YouTube and um, the other social media platforms. As a YouTuber and somebody who creates uh, content almost every day for YouTube, I, you know, I follow quite a few other YouTubers and vloggers to um, you know, see what they're doing um, to you know always be coming up with more ideas and better ideas and so forth. And um, one that I follow, Corey and Kristen, who um, uh, have a a channel called Live Each Day. Uh, they live up in uh, Eagle River, Alaska, and I really enjoy watching them. They have a, a baby girl younger than ours, but they're just fun to watch. And one of the reasons I really like watching them is they're just very, you know, honest in their vlogging and, and do it in such a way that you just kind of feel like part of the family and so forth. So that, you know, inspires me and always kind of uh, reminds me of, of why I do this. So they actually have added our... our Whoa helped me to add an additional goal to my resolutions for this year. So one of the things that I want to do is to um, be very honest in our blogging. So one of the things that they have decided to do as a New Year's resolution on their channel is to not use what people like to call clickbait. So not only using thumbnails that drive traffic by making them look like the, the, it's something that's not on the video or whatever, but, but also, you know, a lot of vloggers will use titles for their videos that they feel will probably draw more traffic. You know, one of the examples that they actually used in their video was, you know, like, they don't want to say like, you know, oh, my kid almost broke his leg. You know when really that's not okay yeah they you know, they hurt the leg or something but it wasn't really close to actually breaking a leg or something like that but but that saying it that way will will you know drive more traffic because of the reason for doing it which is record you know so that our families and our kids and everything can see it you know later down the road um you wouldn't want to go right in a scrapbook and be like oh this is where you almost broke your leg when you really didn't you know what i'm saying so you know, we want to just be honest in our titles, um, in our in our thumbnails, in our videos in general. Period. So, I was you know inspired by that to make that same commitment and you know do that same thing on this channel. So, I, I thank them for that, and I think that that was a uh, an amazing um, thing to do because it does. It does risk that you don't grow as quickly. It does risk that you um, don't do as well on your channel. So I asked Melissa to come in here because um, we had another announcement 
that we wanted to share with you guys. Um, and it's one that we've talked a lot about um, ourselves um, and one that we've prayed a lot about trying to see you know what we thought about it and if it was the right time or not and and we have come to a decision that uh, we are going to start trying again to have another child but Melissa has an appointment scheduled for later this month to go in and um, remove her IUD which she has at the moment so and um, and then once that's removed last time because um, we you know we she had the IUD in between Tommy and Emma and when we decided to remove it and try for Emma it was about a couple months two months it was removed in September and I found out I was pregnant in December so it took two months yeah with Tommy it took we had it removed in January and we um, found out in May that it was mid-January or January 19th actually um, was the date and um, so it took February, March, April, May it took four months but I also was dealing with my appendix. Appendix? Is that what I dealt with? Now your gallbladder? No, my gallbladder. I was done with my gallbladder, so. Yeah. yeah. So she had to go ahead and have that removed, so we kind of had to pause everything for a little bit. You know, we're not going to be as stressed out about it this time as far as, like, you know, watching it every minute and all that kind of stuff, but, um, um, but I think that also will help somewhat. Um, I think that, um, at least with Tommy, not only was there the gallbladder thing, but there was just a lot of stress in our lives period at the time. And so I think that that, um, you know, made it more difficult. We are going to attempt to not find out the sex of the baby until the baby's born, which is very hard for me because I've, I'm an impatient person and I want to know and, um, when you are 35 or older, so you know, when you're old and having babies, um, they do testing around around 10 to 12 weeks. And so you're able to find out about eight weeks earlier than um, younger mothers who have to wait to do the whole ultrasound to find out the sex of the baby. Unless they pay to you know, have the same right. uh, genetic test. Right. But it's the genetic testing, and so we find out through through that versus an ultrasound. Um, and so with Tommy and Emma, we found out at, you know, 10, 11 weeks for, for both of them. Um, and so we had decided, you know, we talked about it and decided that since we have everything, that we would try to wait and, and find out. So we will have to you know make sure that we have a girl outfit and a boy outfit and a girl name and a boy name um, and won't know until you know the, the baby is born so it um, it's gonna be hard very very hard and it's gonna be hard because once the girls here first of all that we're even starting this again um, and then what our plan is, I think it's going to be hard on them because they're impatient too. I don't know where they get that from. So it just isn't as um, crucial or as important. And uh, like I said, I think that it will just be fun um, to do this way. I think that if there is any reason that at some point we decide that we need to know or, or whatever comes up, I think that it will still be fun to have it much later into the pregnancy and you know do it as some kind of um, you know reveal thing or something yeah so if, if we ended up having to find out I think we should do the gender reveal where because yeah. before it's always just been a 
phone call. Go into the doctor's office and do the testing, and then they call and, and you know tell Melissa about. It. So it's I mean, it's still somewhat of a surprise, but it's, it's not something that you can kind of all share at the same time or whatever. So like I I mean I just like I said I think that will be fun. I think that you know maybe what we'll do this time is is um, when they go in and do the genetic testing or whatever, we could just have them write the. Uh, you know, write it down and you know, seal it in an envelope yeah. for us or whatever, and then it give it to you know, give it to somebody or or put it in a file or somewhat something like that, and then give it to somebody I know. <coughs> patient. That's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll I probably take it and put it give somebody so that you, you don't even know where it's at because most will be steaming it open, like you know. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. We'll share the journey as we go, and uh, you know, as things change, we'll let you know, and. Um, Maybe what we'll do might be a little bit <coughs> fun. Is Excuse me. Um, maybe we will uh, let the girls find out um, by watching this, and maybe Video we'll, uh, them we'll watching it. Yeah, without them knowing. I'm just bringing me my drink. <laughs> She's like, oh, I brought it over here for a reason. Juice. Not juice. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, thank you very much, and um, stay tuned. Click subscribe. Tell your friends to click subscribe.